Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would do something more than a little bit different, something I've never done on this channel. Uh, but we like to cover some off-topic stuff from time to time, and I thought, you know, I've got people who've asked me lately all these questions about the fact that I became religious again, that I believe in God. Um, I'm going to keep this one really generic. I'm going to keep this very logical, and I think this will be an interesting thought experiment for people who are like, well, Jason, you're so scientific and logical. How can you believe in this sort of stuff? Um... And I just want to throw a concept out there that might help people understand a lot of the questions that a lot of like atheists and agnostics and other people have, because because I've been down that road, um, that maybe will help them at least understand a concept. And what I'm going to talk about in this video, I don't think is going to be specific to Christianity. I think anyone who believes that there is a God and a creator is going to be on board with what I'm going to say here. And, and I think they're going to say, aha, I, I think you're right. I bet you you're going to see Muslims, you're going to see Jews, you're going to see other people who are going to step in and say, no, 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 he's, he's right on this one. So I bet you I bet you that's going to be the case. So let me uh, go ahead and keep with my tradition on my channel. Let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right. Uh, but up front, uh, I felt I needed to do this today because I've had some crazy events happen uh, in the last couple weeks, they've really popped off this weekend. I'm not going to get into all the details here, but at least one other pretty big YouTuber has been involved in all this and involved in conference calls and all this and is praying themselves uh, for the situation because they have actually had to deal with some of it and they're, they're understanding what's going on. All I'm going to say is that, um, you know, if, if you pray or believe in prayer, uh, I'm just going to ask you guys out there, if you would, if you would, to just pray for me. And two other people I'm not going to name in here. We're all dealing with, with a major situation um, in which one person has more or less extremely flipped out um, to the point to where, like, they're, it's, we're talking self-harm risk and everything else. And, and for those of you who believe in the concept of, of spiritual warfare and all of that, uh, it's very much one of, one of those situations. And so if you believe in those things, just uh, pray for protection and, and for God's will and all that to be done in this situation. Uh, but I want to leave it at that. And, you know, here's what I'm going to talk about. Because a lot of people out there are always saying, oh, you think you're a fake Christian now. That might be its own video to discuss. But let's talk about this concept of God and time. And this will explain some stuff about the whole uh, idea of evolution and stuff as well. And I think it will reconcile maybe some conflicting thoughts there. From a logical and reasonable perspective but you know people say things like well um, you know I don't understand the motives of God I can't understand why he would do this and why he would do that and, and that's questions I had to ask at a certain point in my life uh, having suffered from childhood abuse and stuff that was a factor for me becoming non-religious for a long time uh, of those unanswered questions of why was this allowed to happen to me why did this person have the free will to do these things um, you know these questions we ask is why um, and I think what we need to understand when we start talking about the concept of God and trying to understand why or his logic and reason, we need to think in terms of, are we talking about an actual creator? Because if you are talking about uh, a lot of major religions, including Christianity uh, and others, their idea that their idea of a God is a creator of everything. Right, you're talking about a creator of everything, essentially the creator of the universe. And if things like M theory turn out to be true in, in theoretical physics, the creator of the multiverse. So you're talking about a being that was responsible for, you know, like a big bang that created all of this universe. And they set everything into place knowing that it would roll out to this exact situation. Um, you also would be talking about a being that is outside of space-time. Right? That's the important point we're going to make here. You're talking about a being that would be outside of space-time. And when you think about what that actually means, it means you're talking about a being who is not bound by the laws of time as we think of them. In other words, they're outside the time stream. In fact, they probably exist, would exist. If you're talking about a true creator of the universe, they would have to exist outside of our space-time. The only way it would be physically possible to create it, in, in theory, uh, you know, an all-powerful creator. Which would mean time has no meaning to them. Because they would exist at all points concurrently. 
right? They would exist at every point in time at the exact moment and it would all be the same for them. So when you start talking about such, such a being's ability to predict, well, prediction becomes silly. Uh, you're talking about, when we start talking about IQ, computational power, how, how do we measure these things? They're a product of time, aren't they? All right? they? These things are a product of time. We calculate IQ oftentimes based on how fast you can solve different sorts of problems. That's a big component. Uh, we calculate computational power by cycles and other things on a computer. In other words, fractions of a second and how much it can, you know, thinking it can do or how much processing it can do inside of that microsecond is the power of that computer's ability to process. What happens when you're dealing with a something that can think and can analyze and compute that is not bound by the laws of time? What, what becomes the processing speed of uh, such an intelligence? What's the IQ of such an intelligence? It would be infinity because they're not bound by those seconds and microseconds. In other words, they could make limitless computations because they're existing at all places concurrently in time. They would, in theory, have an infinite computer cycle rate, not a trillion same thing with, with IQ. Do they have a, a million IQ? No. Do they have a trillion IQ? Do they have a trillion trillion times of IQ? No. They would have an infinite IQ. In other words, if you had a trillion trillion IQ, which, you know, is nothing like that's even possible in a human. Even a thousand would be laughable in a human. We, we can't reach that. Um, you would still seem essentially mentally retarded to such, an, such a being. That's the best way to put it. Uh, you, would, you would be laughably unintelligent to them. So here's my point with that. In what world do any of us think that we have the ability to understand the logic of a being with an infinite IQ and an infinite ability to calculate information? You wouldn't have that ability. The entire concept of something being that intelligent is so abstract that we can't even comprehend or think about it. So how do you take a being with an infinite IQ or an infinite processor speed on their, their CPU, how do you even expect to understand its plan and motives? You can't. So when we start asking things like why, would we even be able to understand the why? I don't think that we could. I don't think that the overall why, even if we might understand the small why, we will never understand the big why. Yeah, we might understand that this why happened in this context for whatever smaller reason we are capable of comprehending, but the bigger picture of it, we, we can't. Um, and I think it's very easy to get lost in that concept when you're talking about, again, something like a, a creator of everything, understanding its why, that's beyond our comprehension, right? We, we can't do that. The, the, the idea that we, could even think that we could would, would be absurd. It would be absurd. And it's the same thing when we start talking about something like evolution. People will say, well, you know, uh, it can't work. There can't be a guided intelligence because that wouldn't be the randomness that we see, and that's true. That's why I don't necessarily believe in the concept of guided evolution. I would say to you that the concept of random cannot exist to that being. What appears to be random to you for all intents and purposes wouldn't be random to a being that's on the other end of the before and after at the same time. In other words, if they exist with the before and after result and they had put the motion, the pieces into play originally, whatever billions of years ago to make everything expand at once, they would already have accounted for the randomness on the other side of the equation because they're already on the other side of the equation. In other words, they don't fine-tune anything as they go. Um, that, that doesn't necessarily make sense either because they don't need to because they would already know because they're already existing through every one of the fine-tuning steps that would be there. They're already there at the start and they already know if they just basically thump all this energy at just all this right angle that the end result is going to be everything that has happened five billion years down the road because they're already able to see all of it and experience it simultaneously. 
And again, dealing with some people say, well, that's too much to fit. Well, if you're dealing with something with an infinite IQ because it doesn't have to the same relation to time that we do, then yeah, that does make sense. It would work. That is a workable model. So you're not necessarily talking about the, the guided intelligence that some people will propose. You're, we're talking about something that for our purposes would appear to be random evolution, right? That that entity knew that on this little planet down here and this planet over here and this planet over here, that the sequence that they put into place at this point would produce every individual entity and organism on that planet. Not because they have predictive powers, but because they have infinite computational powers and exist in all moments concurrently, and quite possibly maybe in all possibilities concurrently. I mean, particularly you start, start adding in the concept of Elm theory, something like that with an infinite creator, you have something, the potential to where you, your, your vision of a god, an overall creator, could be an entity that actually concurrently exists with every possibility that could occur in the trillions or infinite number of other universes. That's essentially what you're talking about. Um, so when we start saying stuff like evolution isn't compatible, compatible with the concept of an all-knowing God, I would say actually it, it is compatible. I would say the whole concept of the, the, the sort of guided evolution where people talk about the fine-tuning doesn't. And I've seen some, some interesting analogies where people talk about, you know, a set of, um, like a pool table and all this stuff sit here, and they know that if they roll this ball right here, that every one of these balls are going to land in all these pockets of this exact pattern ahead of time. I think that's limiting. I think that they know it because it, this being already exists at those points at the same time before it's set in motion, that it's all the same to this being, so therefore it just happens as they plan it. And I think if we start talking about the concept of free will, which you know people could argue about if it exists or not, that seems to be kind of consistent with every religion out there. That would be maybe the wild card in all of that, but that God actually still accounts for it on the other end of everything. Right, because they're still there on the other end. They understand how the free will is going to work at the end of the day. And people will say, well, that can't work. They, they wouldn't be able to do that. Well, they existed at all points of time simultaneously with an infinite ability to calculate because they're outside of our normal time stream. They're not bound by the laws of space time as we know them. Uh, then, yeah, actually, maybe they could. Maybe they could still account for the free will component and still make the entire plan work. Because it's not really a plan, is it? It's just existence. So when people discuss these concepts, they're working on a, par a paradigm that doesn't work with our physics. They're working on the paradigm of a being that is bound by our laws of physics and our universe. They're not working on the concept of a being that created this universe and those laws in it, in which case the possibilities of things like all these different things that we think of as evolution appearing to be 100% random and seems to be random, they work. But then people say, well, evolution kind of shows all this suffering and everything else and what sort of kind God would cause this or that among, among all of this. And it's like, well, then we kind of go back to the point of you're also trying to understand the motives and reasons uh, behind a being with infinite intelligence. Um, I wish you the best of luck with that. I wish you the best of luck with that part. So essentially what I'm saying is, is when people get into these arguments and concept of, of God, their models that they ask these questions in and come up with these debates in seem to be a model of a God that didn't actually create the universe, right? They're talking about an entity that is within that universe and bound by its rules, not an entity that created those rules, which would include the way time flows for us. Right, that would be part of that physics. And so again, you've got to look at it from that perspective. Um, so, so that's my take on it. And, and for me, that's my view of a version of God. So when I, when I say the word God, I'm thinking of, for me personally, I'm talking about an entity that exists outside of what we think of as our normal universe in space-time. Or you could say that they exist in the entirety of it inside every molecule, every second, 
at all times concurrently because the time and space and these other things don't have the same meaning that it does for us. Uh, you're talking about a being that wouldn't be limited by these things the way that we perceive them and think of them. So therefore, their relationship with it would be totally different. Um, their motives uh, and, and this, such a being's logic and ability to reason would be so far beyond anything that we could comprehend that it would be essentially not out of this world, but out of this universe. Right? It would be so far beyond our ability to comprehend, we couldn't really discuss it in a reasonable manner or calculate it. You're talking about, again, infinity. You're talking about an abstract that we cannot grasp. And that's kind of the point where people say, I've heard people say that the infinity symbol represents God. And, and I would say in this context, particularly when you're talking about things like space and time and prediction and events and randomness and all of these things, and yes, actually, the concept of infinity would be uh, what we would think of as a true creator God. And I think that concept works in most major religions, not just Christianity, even though Christianity is, is what I ascribe to. Um, I would say that concept works in uh, most major religions that believe in a creator God. Uh, and, I, and I don't think any religious leader from, from most of those religions is going to disagree with that concept that I just laid out if they step back and think about it. Uh, because essentially you're talking about what we would think of as a truly infinitely powerful being. All right? That's what we're talking about there. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.